A botnet is a group of compromised computers or mobile devices connected to a network. It is also known as a zombie army because it consists of all the compromised computers or compromised uh, mobile devices. So botnet is actually a network that is made up of some remotely controlled computers or bots. These are uh, those computers that are infected with some malware which allows them to be remotely controlled from somewhere. So there is someone who is actually having the control of these uh, compromised computers. So it makes a zombie army. And these are usually <clears throat> used to uh, perform distributed DOS attacks. Okay, so um, uh, there is a denial of service attack that is DOS attack. <laughs> Uh, which disrupts computer access to an internet service. So when it is uh, <clears throat> being done on a huge level, it is known as a distributed DOS attack. So DOS, that is denial of service, is actually an attack which is usually done to shut down your machine, to shut down your network, making it inaccessible for the users. That is what usually happens that the servers are being flooded so and so so that the website or that your company is unable to provide the services to the people uh, so uh, the collection of uh, these internet connected devices that are infected and that are controlled by a common type of malware uh, and where you are not uh, unaware of that that your computers which you are working on they are compromised so that is actually being performed by uh, those uh, zombies. So this, uh, these compromised computers, they are zombies or uh, you are unaware that your device is being controlled by uh, someone outside. So bot is, an, is a program that performs a repetitive task on the network. <clears throat> so uh, what you, uh, you do that uh, your uh, your computer is being controlled by that bot and it is repeatedly doing something on the network so that the computer gets slowed down. So cyber criminals, what they do, they install malicious bots on uh, these unprotected computers or devices to create a botnet. So then they use these botnets to send uh, spam with the help of e via email or they spread viruses via them or they may uh, commit a distributed denial of service attack. Then there is a terminology uh, of uh, uh, one more thing and the denial of service attack it is usually uh, being uh, done at ex uh, a very large uh, scale it is uh, usually it is extensive so uh, for example during the sale days uh, there are lots of websites that are doing uh, that are still uh, from where people are buying and selling the things and so the, uh, you don't want that uh, your competitor has good sales so you start sending them uh, uh, you control their website you start flooding their website so that their websites get slows down so what will happen actually their search engine will lose revenue from advertisers people will stop visiting your websites and uh, the time sensitive information may also be delayed so repeated attacks on your website Website on your network will tarnish your reputation and it will uh, create a big big loss to your system to your company then we have a terminology that is a backdoor which is a program or a set of instructions in a program that will allow you to bypass security controls whenever you will uh, want to access a program computer and network and you don't have to use uh, uh credentials or uh, online uh, username password to enter that system so that means you are using some backdoor you are using some chore darwaza type thing to enter into that system so once uh, someone gains access to unsecure systems they will install a backdoor or they may modify the existing program so that uh, they can enter into that system at any time they usually add a backdoor in it which will allow them to continue to access the computer remotely without uh, the user's knowledge. So you will not know that a backdoor is in your system and people are bypassing the security control and entering into your system. <clears throat> so uh, backdoors can be used positively and they have negative impacts as well. Programmers often use backdoors uh, during development because they don't want to enter login uh, password again and again so they use these backdoors 
and if they uh, forget removing them then uh, anyone can use them to gain the entry to that network then we have the technique that is spoofing spoofing is a technique that intruders use to make their network appear as a very uh, legitimate uh, network to a victim computer so uh, you will uh, consider that their uh, uh, website or their network is very legitimate whereas it is being spoofed okay there are two types of spoofing uh, one is ip spoofing and the other is uh, email spoofing so um, okay spoofing is a technique that intruders use to make their network legitimate so there are two co common types of spoofing schemes that is ip and email spoofing so ip spoofing is when an intruder computer fools a network uh, by letting them know that their ip address is coming from a trusted source so the perpetrators they usually trick their victims into interacting them with the phony website for example you will now uh, consider that the website is a legitimate website and then you will start providing confidential information or you may start to download files considering that it is a very good website whereas that website usually contains viruses worms or other malware then we have email spoofing so as the name indicates the email is being altered so email spoofing occurs when the sender's address or the components of email address or email header are altered and now you will consider that the email message originated from a different sender uh, so email spoofing commonly is used in uh, sending viruses spam phishing emails etc <clears throat> okay so how can you protect your computer and network from these attacks so by using antivirus software by uh, suspicion uh, by uh, be always suspicious be suspicious of any email attachments on your email so never open any email attachments always scan removable media that is your usb drives for malware before using them and implement firewall solutions so that uh, uh, your uh, uh, computer should be uh, secured and then take the backup regularly because even if we use antivirus we use anti malware but uh, still it can be infected so you have to take the backup of your data regularly uh, and uh, in, in that case if if there is a new sort of attack on your system so <clears throat> your system is auto because you have taken the backup so you sh you, you should not uh, uh, be worried of that now let's see what are the Okay, firewall is uh, is any hardware or a software that will protect uh, a network's resource uh, that is the computers attached to the network from intrusion by users on another network so you are uh, you are connected to uh, in, in your company on over a network with other uh, people on the internet okay, so your company installs a firewall so this firewall will protect your computer from intrusion from the by the other networks so uh, all the incoming <clears throat> websites will be scanned by this firewall all the incoming media uh, uh, all the outgoing and incoming anything will be scanned and uh, hence uh, no uh, uh, in intrusion from other users on the network will be there so organizations use firewalls to protect network resources from our outsiders and they also restrict their employees connected on this network uh, by their access to the sensitive data so this firewall solution can be implemented uh, by using uh, the firewall protection large organizations they uh, use uh, the proxy server uh, for communication uh, which is actually a component of the firewall so this proxy server is uh, a server which is uh, outside the organization's network controlling all the communication that is coming to the network and all the communication that is going out so this proxy server screens all the incoming and outgoing messages 
and it will check the it will use some screening techniques and it will check the domain name or ip address for legitimacy that either uh, it's uh, spoofing has been done or it is a legitimate address and there are some uh, proxy servers that check the digital signatures of the websites as well so if you're if the website that you have opened it has a digital certificate digital signature then that means it is from some list legitimate source so at your home what you can do you can protect your computers with some personal firewalls you can uh, install personal firewalls it will constantly monitor all transmissions uh, to and from the computers and in, it will inform uh, you as a home user about the attempted intrusions on your computers so windows and mac operating systems they have this firewall capability built in uh, it includes the traffic monitoring to and install from installed applications. So if there is too much traffic on some application, it will inform you uh, that there is so much traffic on your system. So you have to take care of it. So uh, at home, you can even purchase a hardware firewall such as a router. Uh, or which is a device that has a built-in firewall so in, a, in addition to uh, or instead of a personal firewall so uh, your router can uh, st uh, router as a hardware fire firewall it will stop all the malicious intrusions even before they attempt to affect your computer or a network so router can be used if you are uh, on an uh, you are using a home network okay <clears throat> And then we have uh, unauthorized access and usage. So uh, unauthorized access is actually the usage of computer or network without permission of anyone. Access that is you are somebody is accessing uh, without authorization. And unauthorized usage is that someone is using the computer or its data without uh, approval. So unauthorized usage is that is you have uh, given the access of your system to someone but uh, they are not authorized to use it. Uh, so they are uh, um, using uh, your computer or uh, its data for possibly illegal activities. So uh, there are the company's organization, any organization should have a written acceptable policy for that, which should specify the acceptable use of technology because in a company you allow so many people to uh, uh, use the systems that is you are giving them access. So if you are giving them username and passwords, so it means they are authorized to use this, uh, the computers or networks. And if they are have in, uh, no access mechanisms means they cannot use them. So uh, unauthorized usage is that you uh, they are not allowed to use it. So uh, the company should specify the acceptable use of technology for uh, those uh, employees. And whatever the policy is there, the company should uh, explain it to the employees that whether they are authorized to use the systems uh, they have the access and if they have the access what else they can open and use so that is they should have some clear uh, uh, instructions given that they can use this um, printers or not they can dis use the files, they can download files or not on the on their company systems and they can uh, uh, they cannot work after this time uh, they cannot open such and such websites so this is all about the unauthorized access and usage. Okay, the organizations can take several measures to help prevent this unauthorized access and usage by defining this acceptable usage policy that is AUP. And they can also disable Highland printer sharing in the company so that no one can use a printer, no one can uh, share the files. Uh, so this uh, these security measures ensure that no one can access uh, these things so uh, because uh, not everyone wants their employees to use everything every sort of uh, files and uh, hardware resources okay you can also define access control mechanisms so organizations use these access control mechanisms to minimize the chance that no one can access your computer device or a network and whenever uh, they can access if you have given them access credentials so uh, what can they open and what they cannot use and what they cannot open when they are accessing it because you can give um, your for example you can give your laptop to your friend to do some work 
so they say that is you are allowing them to use your computer but uh, obviously you won't uh, want them to open up your files your personal data your personal files similarly these access control mechanisms they define who can access and what can they access and when they can access it what actions they can access it while it is being uh, by their use uh, under their usage so the computers devices or network should maintain an audit trail that will record whenever you will try to open up the computer whenever you will try to uh, uh, use that computer so uh, it will uh, keep a uh, <clears throat> the record of successful and unsuccessful attempts access attempts so an unsuccessful access attempt can uh, uh, could result from a user mistyping his or her password which will definitely tell uh, the or, uh, uh, tell you that there's some perpetrator who is trying to access the system because you as a legitimate user you will know your username and password so organizations should investigate uh those unsuccessful attempts if they are at uh, wrong timings and they are because they are definitely intentional breaches of security they can also the companies they should also uh, review successful access for irregularities for example if they someone is using out of the normal working hours uh, or someone is using uh, the uh, company's computer from a remote location and that uh, irregular activity is uh, suspected so it should alert the security administrator uh, so that he can review uh, the access privileges of the people when they can use and when they cannot use <clears throat> okay access mechanisms are uh, allow you to use the system with the help of use username and password so as we all know that a username is also known as a user id it can be a login name it can be a sign in name it is a unique combination of characters uh, that identifies you and a password is a private combination of characters associated with that username that will allow access uh, to uh, certain computer resources then we have a uh, uh, passphrase pin biometric devices uh, which uh, which allow you to which give you some authorized access to use the system uh, so passphrase is a private combination of words uh, often containing mixed capitalization and punctuation associated with a username that allows you to access certain computer resources whereas pin that you okay password is password was a combination all of uh, some uh, words or letters passphrase is a sentence a different combination of words then we have pin that is personal identification number so it is a number uh, or a passcode or an, which is a numeric password which is either assigned by a company or you can change it on your own as well then uh, you can have a possessed object that you must possess to uh, access something for example you are using your RFID cards to enter university uh, you are using your ATM cards to access your accounts so that is a possessed object which uh, you have an access to uh, it and you can use it to uh, gain access to any facility then we have biometric devices which authenticates a person's identity by translating a uh, personal uh, person's personal characteristics into a digital code that is compared with a digital code in a computer or a mobile device verifying a physical or behavioral characteristic so what this biometric device actually does it uh, will identify you by uh, it has uh, your uh, uh, any uh, code saved in itself for example your thumb impression is saved in the database and whenever you enter your thumb impression so it will be this impression will be checked against that uh, uh, that um, that code is saved in the computer so there are different uh, types of biometric devices uh, so if the these digital codes in the computer does not match your personal characteristic code then uh, the computer or mobile device will do will not give access to that in uh, to you so biometric devices grant access to programs computers or rooms to enter any institute any industry to enter etc using some computer analysis of some biometric identifier uh, biometric devices can be 
fingerprint readers there can be hand geometry uh, systems finger recognition systems voice verification systems uh, and uh, so let's uh, see them one by one